Hello, fellow burgers. My name is Dennis Kania. Today we'll be discussing all of the plovers that could be encountered in DuPage County. On the DuPage Birding Club Education Channel, we'll be discussing all things bird related. And as I mentioned, we'll be taking a look at the plovers that can show up in DuPage County, both large and small. So here are the five species that we'll be discussing. We have two large ones at the top here. We have the black bellied plover, and we also have the American golden plover. These are very large, chunky birds. And then we have an intermediate sized bird, the Kildare, that people are probably pretty um, familiar with. And then two small plovers. We have the semi palmated plover here and the piping plover. And what all these birds do have in common is this very short, stocky bill. You can see that on all five of these birds. And this really sets it ap them apart from a lot of the other shorebirds that we've been discussing in previous tutorials. So keep that in mind that you've got these really large, chunky headed and short stocky billed birds. And those are, are going to be our plovers. We do have records for all five species at Fermilab uh, that we've collected in our survey periods over the last 33 years. You can see that the spring migration is concentrated in May for most of these migrating birds. And with a rare occasion, you'll maybe get some records uh, halfway through April. They're not gone very long, in particular for the semi-palmated plover, um, which returns right around the 4th of July. The others coming in slightly later, but they're all around through the end of September and well into October in many cases. And on rare occasions, they might even make it into November. We have many, many fewer records for piping plover, but our most recent one comes from uh, May. Uh, and that would be in the survey period that ran from 2012 to 2016. And we did have a much earlier record that was uh, in the fall migration. And that one comes from the 1987 to 1991 uh, survey period. Kildare is our only breeding plover. And you can see that they start showing up in mid-February. As soon as the ice is out on lakes and snow is melting, these birds start showing up. And we will have them with us through the entire breeding season, all the way through well into November. And on rare occasions, they'll even make it into December and be recorded on Christmas counts in the area. So here's a really great image. It shows actually four of the plover species that we'll be discussing, all captured nicely in one image. So that's very, very handy. Here's our cornerstone species that we'll use um, for basing the size of the other birds. And it's a bird that should be um, familiar for all of us. It's the Kildare. And you can see it's kind of a medium sized bird compared to everything else here. And long legged, large head, short build. We compare it to the next species here, which is much shorter legged, a smaller looking bird. This is our semi palmated plover. It's a very, very short build with that chunky head. If I look over here, I see the two larger plovers in these five individuals. The one in the foreground here is our American golden plover, and you can see it's large headed and very sh uh, short, um, fine bill and kind of long legged, chunky bird overall. And the black belly plovers that are surrounding it, there are four individuals here, also very, very chunky, slightly larger, heavier build. Uh, larger headed. So let's take a closer look at the killdeer, which is our common species. Everyone should be fairly familiar with this. This bird does show up in many, many situations. You'll find them in parking lots and vacant lots, um, park grounds, uh, ag fields, mud flats. This bird can show up just about anywhere and it's very conspicuous because it's very noisy. So most people will have encountered this bird. It's easily identified by the two collars on the neck here. You can see there's two black uh, bands running across. So that's a very obvious field mark. And then this bird will also sometimes flare its tail or you'll see its tail in flight. And you'll see that the base of the tail is very rufousy as well as the upper tail coverts and rump. I've thrown this image in here just so that you're aware of the fact that um, little chicks of the Kildare will have only one collar. And these birds can be seen on the mud flats in the early part of the summer. So just be aware of that, that you could actually run into a bird that might at glance, at glance make you think that you're seeing a semi-palmated plover. 
but it does look longer legged than the semi palmated plover would look, especially when you compare it to the size of the body. So that's our, our common plover, the Kildare. So now we'll discuss the two larger plovers, and we have black bellied plover here and then American golden plover here. And you can see that they're both very chunky looking birds, large headed, and then they have these short stubby bills. In particular on the black belly plover, you can see it's wide at the base and that um, wide bill does continue out all the way to the tip. So it's a chunky looking bill when you compare that to what we see on the American golden plover, which starts out wide, large, uh, wide at the base and then tapers down to a finer point. Both of them will appear larger headed, um, but more so with the black bellied plover. Another feature that you might look for is the length of the wings. And in the case of the black belly plover, the wings will not extend beyond the tail. Whereas with American golden plover, the wings will extend beyond the tail. And where my cursor is now, it's very hard to see in this image, but where my cursor is now, that's about where the tail is ending. And where I have my cursor now, that's about where the wings are ending. You can just kind of see a dark line running through here. So you can definitely see that the wings are longer uh, extending further than, than the tail. One last feature that you can keep in the back of your mind is that the black belly plover will have dark axillaries and that's the armpit area here under the wing. So in flight or if the bird is at rest and flexing its wings, you might actually get to see that black axillary region. On American golden plover, you can see that that's actually very plain. It matches with the underwing lining and the belly, so you don't see that dark patch there at all. And here are our two smaller plovers. We have uh, the semi palmated plover, which is going to look very dark at first glance, and piping plover, which is going to look very, very pale at first glance. So, just right away, you should be able to tell that you're looking at something pretty special when you see that piping plover. So this dark back, you have a very dark collar. It's a thicker collar that does extend all the way around the throat. And you can see that the ear coverts are also very, very dark compared to the rest of the head. When you look over here at the piping plover, again, very pale. Um, it's a lesser of a collar. In fact, it's not always complete. So you can see it's broken here on the front. And you can see the face look very, very plain. The, Ear coverts are gray, but it's you know just blending in with the rest of the face. So it's very, very plain looking face. Both species can have this orange base to the uh, bill. You can see that in both individuals here, but both are gonna be rather short and chunky looking. And both have these yellowy orange looking legs uh, that are rather short. You're not very likely to see piping plover in the county, but they do occur. And as we showed in the Fermilab records, we have a couple records there. And the most recent record that I've had was actually just uh, probably a three minute walk from my house. In our subdivision, they were uh, lowering the water levels in a retention pond that needed some repairs done to it. And it created perfect uh, shorebird habitat. And lo and behold, one day I looked out there and I discovered a, a piping plover. So it can happen, lightning can strike almost anywhere in the county. So you do need to be aware of that. And as rare as these birds are, um, they still can show up in the county. So keep your eyes peeled. So here's some key features to keep in mind. The two large plovers do differ in size, but that is best used when they are seen side by side. Black bellied plover is the larger headed of the two. It's larger build and shorter wing than American golden plover. Black bellied plover has the dark axillaries, which are lacking in American pl golden plover. And killdeer is our most common plover and should be easily recognized by by everyone. It does have that double collar band and it does have rufous at the base of the tail and rump. Semi-palmated plover is much darker on the upper parts than the piping plover and semi-palmated plover has more of a complete collar and also a darker face pattern than the piping plover. So thanks for taking the time to view this video. Hopefully we have given you some bird food for thought and I hope you'll join us again in the future as we explore all things bird related.